गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून एंड गुड इवनिंग शुभ दिन एंड मे दिस एस्पिशियस डे बिकॉज बींग ए योगी फॉर मी एवरी डे इज एस्पिशियस एवरी मोमेंट इज एस्पिशियस एवरी मोमेंट दैट वी कैन रिमेंबर द डिविनिटी इज एस्पिशियस every moment that we can keep mentally quiet is auspicious this auspiciousness get disturbed when we are unable to keep the mind quiet at peace if you need to imagine think is no problem but if you are unable to keep it quiet is the problem if you want to drive your car is no problem nobody has prohibited but if you are unable to stop the car that is the problem so that is where we come in to help you to create an awareness there is a need to stop the mind for you to achieve peace and there was a question on my email if the divine paramatman is already in itself and then we as somebody trying to get self realization who is this we are we something to do with that parmatma are we totally separate entities what it is i have explained i thought ki i will give that answer here in the zoom they said ki they come to zoom classes regularly i decided i will answer here also it will serve as a tip for you all you why you have to meditate what you are supposed to achieve in meditation well the divine as a whole the absolute doesn't need any realization it is already there it is in itself it doesn't go into any imaginations it does not have any wishes i have even explained this universe is happening due to god but not according to god's wishes there is difference in these two things if god had wishes then we could have asked god ki why some are happy why you have made some unhappy god has not made anybody happy or unhappy it is we all we have made ourselves unhappy we have made ourselves happy so that is what it is how if we are unable to control our mind we lose control and the mind is preoccupied with its own imaginations it gets involved into dualities of happiness and unhappiness of awareness and unawareness so this mind just now we call it as mind that mind also is you yourself if you want to recognize in that way so you as an individual is the mind means you have become a droplet from your main source that is divinity this droplet needs realization awareness of itself as that truth <coughs> otherwise all of you seem your conscious would be hidden in the physical body as a personality with your name with your status and so many other imaginations so these things can hurt you can give you ego can raise any problem can give you unhappiness tension fear everything so many things keep happening otherwise there is nothing if you re- so that you that you is need to realize the ultimate you that is what you are trying when you practice meditation so we teach you to just watch so that you can get rid of the thoughts and visions that is the only technology you don't attend to your thoughts then thoughts will disappear this is the definition if you attend to thought if you try to get rid through any other means through intelligence through anger or through pushing through removing it cannot happen it will always be there you just keep quiet ignore ignore that one do not react when you do not react you are really meditating you are into meditation that's what you have to achieve in this practice and that is what the tip is just keep watching means let anything come don't bother from where it is coming we can discuss afterwards 
where it is coming. It is all as a habit in there and it comes. So when it is not there, it is not there. That is all. When it goes away, you are peaceful. Your awareness turns to the reality of what you are. So you gain that awareness. That awareness gaining is sakshatkar. You finally, when you merge with that one, is sakshatkar. That is what is recommended goal. Nirvana or who am I? Everything. Different teachers have used different terminologies. I tell Never get confused, all are same. Simply you get rid of your imagination and you are there and then you use what terminology you want to use. So that's what you will know. You will become quiet. So that's what is awareness and sakshatkara. So when you sit down in a short while, in about a minute or so, you sit in any comfortable posture. Do not switch off the video. Let me see that is needed so that I can guide you, I can watch you. I won't go into any imaginations about you, don't worry. I will just watch you that you are closing the eyes, listening to my instructions. That's what I need to see. Then we will, you see, are you listening to my instructions within your mind? Only you can see, nobody else can see, don't worry. But you have to be sincere whether your mind is becoming quiet, silent, or not. That is what you have to do. So now sitting in any comfortable posture, you keep your eyes closed gently. Keeping the eyes closed, concentrate your mind and sight in between eyebrows and just keep watching there. Using your eyeball and your mind both. Focus. Mentally if you are remain focused, your mind will also be there. And then do not repeat anything, no need of any mantra or name. And do not imagine about anything. And do not open your eyes for 30 minutes till I recite a prayer and will ask you to open the eyes. May you all be blessed. For any newcomers and the old one also, just to remind Three words, dedication, discipline, and patience. If you are disciplined, you will listen to the master's instructions and exactly just do it. You won't do anything else. Even if God comes and asks you, why are you doing this? My master has told I am doing. That's it. That is discipline. Dedicate. Never say, Never again that there is no time. There is time. Time is all yours. You have to take it out, set a priority. I must do it. I need that. So then you have the time. Then patience. Patience. That's why in ancient times with the gurus, lot of seva, service was recommended. During the service, the gurus used to scold, heart, boot, this, that, everything to frustrate and make the disciple run away finally. So those who wouldn't run away, who remained surrendered, who kept quiet, who thought, ke, let the master do anything he wants. Let him, we all thought, ke, let him cut us into pieces and throw to a river. We will join and come back. No problem. That's the patience you practice when you surrender totally. That patience helped us in meditation just to watch when initially thoughts and visions come. We just watched, we didn't bother. If anybody humiliated us, we just kept quiet in the life also, the ashram also, anything. That patience will help you and will take you to realization of your real self. Self-realization, that's what it is. Okay, what you are actually. You have to become aware. You are already that. You don't have to become anything. Simply you have to become aware. So that's what, due to imaginations, you have come out. One day, you will be able to go and experience that amazing. Always, 
when you are looking for happiness once you taste a higher better happiness you won't like to go back to the lower one actually you will you'd like to taste the same again and again once that's what life on this earth also imagine your childhood at that time something else would have been so dearer so important so vital so priority for you playing with the toys once that age is over that stage is over so you would have lost that appetite also and they would have got attracted or become responsible adopted responsibilities for something else so like that you would have gained momentum to other things other things higher once you have come if you look back sometimes it might appear quite funny all those things but at that time that was the serious need that was such an important oh great you are ready to fight with anyone defend yourself defend your toys cry shout whatever you needed to do you would have done as a child but now it could be quite funny for you the same way the day you taste the peace within the mind and you become aware when your attention turns to yourself so know that i was not really mad to come out of my home and come to a master and stay here for 20 years at his lotus feet and serve and then meditate and do tapas and achieve this i was mad after this not actually mad for this world people tell na ki he is mentally challenged that's why he is doing like that not like that we were mad after god mad after self realization well wonderful michael we can take questions now i was just wondering like how how do we tell between like a true guru who has like our best interests at heart and wants to teach us and like some fraud who like is still in like ego and wants something from us or something or something about a true guru first point you need to be sincere sincere means you should go only for the truth of existence of the ultimate truth of spirituality and you shall not have imagination of any other wonder powers magical powers money this that are go into a monastery and try to achieve any uh, office any status so if you are not attracted to that one first that is the first point for sincerity if you are sincere you will not compromise and you will not look for any other type of guru at all you will not get attracted to any other glamorous things you will look for this spiritual truth only when you look divine will bless that you will be blessed with the right genuine guru and after you find also suppose you don't know from technically scientifically speaking you won't know what i am so you just do the sadhana what the guru recommend see if that is the truth if that appeals to you that makes sense for you to know to achieve peace to achieve self awareness and just go on doing and stay away from the guru don't go clo- closer to the master at all you just do your things nowadays technology is available you don't have to physically go and see also your master sitting at your home just on the la- laptop you are safe no guru can harm you nobody can harm you so you just sit there and do your job and above all you look within you will have an inner appeal see whether it is genuinely appealing to you what the master talks what the master behaves is also important what the master teaches all these things are important if these are all if you feel sincere and right and worthy then go otherwise you always have a right to give up not to go for that one nobody will curse you nobody will cut you into pieces awesome thanks bhavaji yeah thank you bhavaji um my question is about knowledge uh yana yoga and raj yoga meditation and like for the last 10 years i've been wanting to read and know and understand and putting meditation more to one side but 
I, I don't know how to balance this. I mean, I've been reading Vivekananda and he's always yeah, Raj Yoga, I'm sorry, Yani Yoga, and he's always in his head, very good at talking and all the rest of it. But how do you balance when you see moving from one to the other? The other. Now you pay attention to my answer. If a master is genuine and has achieved self-realization, he will not insist on only one thing because such a yogi understands all are same. Knowledge, whether it is Raja Yoga or Bhakti Yoga, anything, it is the practice which will take you there. Ultimately, you have to achieve the silence of the mind and through that mind which turns introvert, you have to become aware. Reading a book, simply reading a book itself will not give you a first-hand knowledge because you are reading either somebody else's experience and that person when it, he presents, he shall use such a language to which he is used to or such a culturally background that he has, he will use such a language. Sometimes that could be confusing. So you read any book only just to feel motivated, inspired, and then practically you have to jump. Any yoga, through any means, yoga is the important, Raja Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, through different type of actions. Dhyana Yoga is you pay attention. You have to sit down, close the eyes and pay attention. Karma Yoga, you have to be active in this world. When you are active, and you just accept the results as it comes. You put an effort for whatever desire you have. So when you accept the things as it is, your mind recedes. So whatever you do, your mind has to become quiet. That is important. Raja Yoga also, anything. So never feel that you are the Raja. Actually, the self is the Raja. That's how it is taught, Raja Yoga means. And you have to achieve that you are one with that king. Raja means king. That king, kingdom. Some cultures have used these terminologies. But it is not anywhere else. It is you, yourself. Only clue connection is your own mind. So that is what you have to do. Do not get confused. You have to achieve mental silence first. And then that mind goes introvert. That gives you the first hand knowledge practical knowledge. That's what our masters told. No matter how many books you read, no matter how many lectures you listen to, your own experience will make lot of difference in the truth. You will see that truth totally awesome, amazing. Because when you read a book, you are likely to get into a certain type of imagination criteria. Depending on the language of the book, your understanding capabilities. So use that book, any such book, which is closer to this truth for feeling motivated that you have to jump. Reading a book is how to jump into the river. Then jumping into the river is the meditation. Meditation is the common word. For that many people have used different terminologies to attract students Raja Yoga, Transcendental Yoga, this Yoga, Das Yoga, everything is the same, just the Yoga. So you don't have to feel confused, practice meditation, then you will practically do the Raja Yoga, you will realize that you are that King, you are that Raja, you are that Self. Wow, thank yeah. you very much, that's made it so much clearer. Thank you. Um, I was reflecting um, uh, to your talk before the class uh, when you said that uh, um, basically our job is to uh, is uh, for the droplet uh, to uh, go back uh, to ourselves in order to achieve that peace and that uh, union with with the true self. And uh, I can see how meditation can help us to do that, uh, as I experience some glimpses of that. 
but in my everyday life, uh, that uh, droplet sometimes uh, become a tsunami. Uh, and uh, uh, because the interaction I have with uh, other people or family or uh, your boss and so forth, that droplet uh, becomes uh, really, as I said, a tsunami. And uh, it's, I find it difficult uh, to keep that uh, at bay. To be honest, uh, I've improved with uh, with years, but still I can see that the uh, droplet uh, is uh, not uh, under control. So how, what, what is your advice, uh, basically? Um, yeah, one particular advice, when this droplet, you become tsunami, first thing, have patience. Don't lose temper. That's very important. Then slowly the tsunami recedes and comes back to droplet position again. So this was important. Patience is one such thing which can be helpful to make the mind recede, to become quiet, to come under control, to restrain itself and put you back on the track again. So that is one great mantra, patience. Then realize any other technique you try to use, there are more tsunami, more tsunami. You have to become quiet here. So if you don't become quiet, there is tsunami. So you cannot be separate from the tsunami and try to stop it through any other means, not possible. So you have to become quiet. You have to become droplet. So that is one advice. Thank you. <laughs> Brahman Babaji. Um, in, in Christianity, there's um, uh, quite an emphasis on having sincere faith and then connected with that miracles. Did Swamiji say anything similar about this sort of connection between faith and miracles happening? Or did he just say well, it's not that important, that the spiritual uh, practice is important? This word miracles, you need to understand. Sometimes uh, miracles means we tend to think whatever we wish that must happen. So what Swamiji said was not that one. Like all the gurus like Swamiji, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa did speak about faith. Like Swamiji spoke, you lose anything in this world is no problem, but do not lose faith. Means this faith can work such a wonder, means such a wonder that sustains you on the path to the ultimate truth, gives you determination and you will be able to feel the grace of the Master so these are considered as wonders. Your efforts can bring in miracles that I have told in my talks too. So this is how they have compared the faith. Even Ramakrishna has said, faith in the name of Lord or name of Guru can work wonders for you. Last time you spoke about consciousness and I picked something up. You said the, uh, that consciousness takes the path through the mind. And, and as the mind has two ways, and that is through thinking and imagination, so consciousness either takes this way or consciousness uh, takes the way of watching. Is that the mechanic here of... of um, uh, yes, yes. Going into med yes. Through meditation? I understand what you're talking. I would have told... Uh, Mind has no third way, means it won't go anywhere else. Either it is into imaginations of this world, it is wandering in this world with imagination, or it goes towards its ultimate truth, that which is recognized as self, ultimate truth, or divinity. Different cultures would have recognized in different terminologies. So it goes, means if it is imagining, it is extrovert. If it stops imagination, it starts going towards its origin, finally merges with that self. 
so this is what i would have told so for this purpose only meditation is start the purpose that you need to understand first target is silence the mind let the mind get rid of its imaginations automatically it will take you back to the self and you become aware because i have also told this mind or this self is a combination of consciousness and energy consciousness means i will tell the criteria wherever you apply your consciousness or your mind different terminologies in different stages when it is imagination you use for the same substance as mind when it is pure no imagination you use it as consciousness wherever you apply you become aware of it if you are able to apply or it gets applied introvert you cannot apply until you have imagination the mind will always become preoccupied with its own imagination it will see the vision a visual effect or a thought process so you have to stop these two things thought process and visual effect then only it goes introvert and becomes aware of itself that is the technology to achieve this one so that is why it is start just watch the thoughts and visions do not react to them don't try to recognize don't analyze don't any make any judge, judgment this is the teaching if you achieve this it stops otherwise it has a tendency to get involved with the visions and thoughts and keep thinking thought after thought one thought goes and you acquire another thought one thought goes and you start thinking another thought comes hen out of egg egg out of hen you get involved into the whirlpool skillfully withdraw one you withdraw your recognition your analyzing effects so this is what i would have tried to explain thank you for clarifying there's one question added on to this uh is when you don't mind uh the i i see myself you know as, as we go more and more into deeper meditation there is we change ourselves meaning our desires becoming less so sometimes we are jumping back into the desires you know we take we jumping back into old ways uh but recognizing that it's the wrong way is there any punishment or 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 for us there or or, the, or the, what is the consequence for it for it have, no need to worry to... just ignore yeah. simply do not recognize because already you have wasted with one thought if you are going to think about it you will be wasting with another thought so that is all. Uh, so let that has gone that one moment has gone let it go no problem become quiet just to see it is over the past is over it will not come back under any circumstances it is just meant so that you don't repeat the same mistake keep quiet so like that if you go you can get rid of that and you can achieve thank you very much for us pranas baba ji um baba ji was just now talking about faith and saying that it would bring you back onto the path um does that mean any difficult situation or any uh troublesome thing that comes we can think um uh maybe this is for a reason that this is happening does that is that helpful yes. for this that also yeah. is recommended is a good thing it is the same as having faith yeah everything will be all right console yourself assure yourself positively it will be all right this is a temporary fear the master will take care god will take care of it he will sort it out so though we did not want this to happen it is giving so much of pain yet if it has happened maybe there is something good in his store so it will be all right if one door closes another door opens like that positive thinking always that will be helpful that uh, helps you to sustain faith cultivate and keep the faith and that will enhance your position also thank you babaji sometimes during my practice i have uh, it feels like an unbearable mental urge to just stop the practice and i just want to open my eyes and just get off of where i'm sitting 
And I just, is there something I'm doing incorrectly or how should I? Uh, no. I um... You see, since long, long time, time immemorial, mind was used to go out extrovert, get scattered in the universe everywhere, in imagination only. Now when you are trying to bring it, I have given the example like a cooking gas put into the cylinder. So that mm -hmm. gas, pressurized gas, so if it want to come out, it can burst open like that. It can be so disastrous, dangerous sometimes. In the same way, when you are practicing, when the mind is gathered, when it has gathered, so it is also become powerful now. It, because it is gathered, with all its power, it tries to jump out extrovert. At that time, only the patience is the weapon you have to use. Patience. Then this will recede and become quiet. For some time, it can become unbearable and it can be you, teeth biting type of things can happen. Just have patience. If necessary, take a long inhale and exhale. Remember the Guru, whomever, whoever is dearer to you, the name, and pray, and then it will be all right. You can continue further. It's like a dual battle. The battle is yes. one with patience, is the sword. Thank you, Babaji. Hi, Babaji. Um, you know, after, <laughs> after that moment, of awareness, um, then I, I realize how frightened I am of the whole world. I really don't even want to be here. Um, it's just such, I don't know. <laughs> it's just really scary. Scary. What is scary? You are trying to tell the world. <laughs> I mean, this earth plane. Um, I mean, the other place is very quiet and peaceful. And, um, and then I'm aware of I'm just a whole energy form of fear. Um, but I have but Guruji's protecting me. Yeah, have that faith because whatever the world is, actually an imagination about that world in your mind is what is mm. troubling you. If you can mm. remove that imagination, just control, restrain, you will feel all right. You will feel at peace. For that only, meditation is one such remedy. Other than this, any chants, if it is dearer to you, some devotional soothing music also, or can be very good therapy to control this mind and divert it at attention devotionally. Have faith with the Guru and God. Everything will be all right. The world cannot harm you. It is simply you are imagining. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. Pranams, Babaji. Uh, Babaji, you have said that the false state of I only lasts as long as the ignorance that gives rise to it lasts. Can you speak a little more about this? The first I, we have imagined ourselves to be this physical body given a name to this physical body. With that, so many other status-wise also we have given and made it an ego means as I. I am this country, I am to this religion, I am to this caste, I am to this status, I am a businessman, I am an officer, so many hundreds of things. They are all sitting in our imagination as I am. Now we have to find who am I actually? Am I these things that I have imagined or am I something else that is beyond? So that is how the first eye is all these imaginations. These are also known as subtle bodies in scriptures. Some teachers, some great sages have mentioned as assuming subtle bodies. It appears to be as a vision in our mind that I am this, I am that. So all this, so you have to get rid of all this imagination, cross the barrier of time and space, then you can go towards the real I, real self. You have to observe and see. 
Now, this is one thing the ancient sages discovered was to know anything perfectly, observation is the important thing. And that observation from where it should come. When the mind is not into any imagination, they also saw if the mind is any imagination, that mind will observe only that imagination. So when you close the eyes, you are unable to observe from where the eye actually is arising, that feeling of the eye. Because there are imaginations and visions, so the mind becomes preoccupied, its attention there. So then you are unable to observe about yourself. Like I have given the example of movie, when you are sucked consciously into the movie, you are unable to remember that you are sitting and watching the movie. Instead, that movie that is being watched appears to be a reality. So it can create panic, it can create good, bad, everything. So this is how this I keeps playing. Finally, those sages thought, who am I actually? They wanted to know, they understood, we have to observe. When you have to observe, your mind, that is pure consciousness, must not be into any other imaginations. That's what Adi Shankaracharya also has told in Viveka Chudamani. When you come face to face to that truth, and at that time, when your consciousness is not into any type of imagination, know that existence as the truth. That is the true I. Thank you, Babaji. Hi, Baba. Thank you for being here. Uh, question about ego, its proper place. Um, uh, like, I've heard you say that me and mine is the problem. And if it gets out of control, obviously, uh, we don't want to live in an ego uh, place. But at the same time, is desire, um, does that come from ego, the discipline, the, the faith? the willingness to sit down and do a meditation, is that a product of ego? You see, finally, every imagination which keeps you away from your real self is considered an ego in spirituality. Now, there are good and bad qualities. Now, any such ego imagination which can take you back to the truth is a good, you can take help. Now you spoke about the desire also. In this world, having a desire itself is not a problem. You can have a desire, but the problem arises if that desire doesn't get fulfilled. There should be acceptance. If you don't have acceptance, you will be into trouble. You will lose your peace, your patience, everything can happen. So at that time, you need to have your patience. So that is when you have to understand to get rid of this ego. Means you have to get rid of all imaginations. So to get rid of all other imaginations, you take help of a highest imagination, which can take you to that truth. That is recommended. So when you get to the truth, automatically that also gets dropped. Very good, thank you. Pranams Babaji. Um, I have a question about um, doing longer meditation, but in particular how destiny and how does longer meditation affect destiny or shapes our future, Babaji? Actually, there is no such thing called destiny because there is no such thing called future evidentially. Until it doesn't come to this moment in the present, we don't know what it is. A destiny word is to be used, in my opinion, and what I have understood from my master and experiences. When a certain thing happens, once it happens, if it is not according to your expectations, so that you don't lose hope and you don't become frustrated, you think of destiny. This was destined to happen like this. Means, don't keep worrying. Get back to again, try again. We can let us try again. 
that's what it is but often people try to imagine what the future means they will imagine a certain future oh it has to be like this can i get rid of any such a destiny which will be troublesome which will kill me which will give me illness all this thing must not happen that is what their imagination that is not the thing you get rid of destiny means a positive destiny can happen when you positively keep thinking and put an effort so when you meditate finally you get rid of all destiny when you go back to the self you realize you are that so whatever happens to the body is not a real botheration it is nature it is it has to happen this body is born this will have to die but i am not going to die that is the consolation that is the truth so that is how you have to deal with destiny thank you so much babu ji uh baba ji when i practice meditation uh, many times uh, i experience some shocks during in the, uh, at the base of my spines so just request you to guide me how to progress further you continue your concentration in between eyebrows do not let that concentration drop that is important have patience so this thing will be all right when mind is becoming concentrated when it tries to lift the body consciousness also then you are likely to experience some energy movements or energy things so it will be all right on its own if there is any other physical pain only then you have to attend to it physically otherwise this energy is no problem it will be all right but you have to maintain your concentration in between eyebrows just continue with all the patience and peace is important thank you abhi oh wonderful i appreciate all of you for taking out your precious time and wanting to learn from us whatever i have answered based on my tapas experience what my master taught me based on all these things my own opinions what it is and the practice of meditation we have taught try to remember the points for meditating what i have given let it penetrate to the inner layers of your mind so that it is ringing in your ears and you don't forget yeah so many years ago whatever our masters told even today it rings in our ears we cannot forget so that keeps us aware to go on the right path so this will help you if you adopt a master and that master's words wherever you are you will feel that and you will have that reverence seriousness to do it every day when you sit down remember this point sit in any comfortable posture relax close the eyes gently just keep watching in between eyebrows take care that you don't fall asleep your body also your head also should not fall down then you are likely to go to sleep that is important take care of this point if necessary you can sit on to a wall as a support and keep a small cushion or a pillow behind your back just sit straight practice this sit when you should have taken sufficient rest and also after a meals give 2 to 3 hours at least for that to digest so that you feel lightly you don't feel sleepy that is important heaviness of the body is to be avoided so that's important if you take care of all these points meditation becomes very smooth and you can achieve